Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today I'm gonna take you through this Peyton's Decor pattern. This is using beautiful cable work that you see within the afghan. There's also a matching pillow if you'd like to do that as well. Today I'm gonna be concentrating on how to do the panel work in order to get that done and uh, you can do the pillow and just finish that off if you want to as well because the same design that is in the afghan is also in the pillow. You just gotta look at the instructions because there's a few more steps than for the pillow. So what we have here is two different panels and you have to do them at multiple of times in order to get it up and then you're gonna whip stitch them together to complete your entire uh, afghan. It's using Peyton's Decor yarn with a recommended ball or hook size of five and a half millimeter size I. Now I don't have Peyton's Decor in stock so I'm gonna be use, using Karen one pound yarn today in order to complete this. So there is panel A and panel B and we're gonna be covering both of those here today. So let's take a look at the afghan and let's determine what we're looking at. So the panel A is this one here and there's three of those in order to make that. So it's kind of a, like a really relaxed a lattice work that you see. And then we have then panel B which is the cabling work that you see here and it's really quite easy and there's four of those. So one, two, three and four. So once you have all seven of these done you're gonna whip stitch them together. So just grabbing uh, some yarn and just sewing them together to make it complete and then you do the final border. The final border has four rounds in it and we'll be covering that at the end of today's tutorial. So I have uh, drawn for myself a crochet diagram and we're gonna start off with panel A first and then we'll progress to panel B in a little bit. So here's my rough diagram. I always like doing diagram work especially when doing tutorials because this will be off the screen that you cannot see and I'm looking at it as I'm crocheting along. So we're gonna get ourselves started and there is a total of 23 stitches all the way across. So we're gonna be chaining a total of 25 to start and then there will be 23 stitches then that goes across. So this is a foundation row. This is not row number one. So row number one starts in the next one here when we start doing the work that you see. So I always have to look up what these symbols are. So we start off with the front posts and those are what we can see on the very edge of this panel and then you'll see that the lattice work then picks up and uh, you'll see that it progresses and it gets more and more narrow. So I didn't bother to draw any more of this diagram here because these front posts and back posts that you see coming up um, they follow all the way up through it, the whole thing so it was easy for me to remember and what I need to keep in count and it's really for this particular idea. So you'll notice that when you're looking at it here I do it for myself but I start off and then you see the number 11 here so there's 11 double crochets before you do another cluster like we're gonna show you and then the next round there's nine and then there's seven and five and three and one. Once you get all the way to number seven then let's just move this down is that we have to then go backwards. So then we look at number six. So number eight equals six and then nine equals five and you can see that it's gonna progress and you're just gonna follow the instructions and it will just simply just grow back out. And then once you get to number 12 that's it of the repeat pattern and then you start all the way from one to 12 again and, to, and keep doing one through 12 until there's 54 inches. At the very final one that you have omit the turning chain at the end. So one of the things about this pattern is really quite old but um, it start it ends each one with the chain three and then turn. I like to do my chain three um, at the beginning of each one and you'll notice that in today's tutorial. So my goal here is to get you started and show you how to do one through 12 and then we're gonna carry on and I'll leave that for you and then we'll move on to the next panel. So let's grab our five and a half millimeter size uh, eye crochet hook and some uh, yarn to play with today. So let's begin with our yarn and let's now chain 25 to begin and uh, this is considered an intermediate level so I'm not gonna go through the basics of crochet in this one today. So remember that never counts as one so you go one two, three, four and five and go all the way to 25 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. Okay now that I have my 25 on here I'm gonna progress now through the foundation row. So this is not row number one and I want you to count back to the fourth stitch. So just count back. So one, two, three and turn it over and get the fourth one. So get the back hump of the fourth one away and you are going to uh, double crochet in the back hump of that one plus the back hump of each one of the chains going all the way down. If your math is right there will be a total of 23 stitches all the way across. Make sure that count is accurate and meet me at the end of this chain and then we'll begin to go through one through 12 with you on camera. So I've now come all the way across. I have verified that I have 23 stitches all the way across. This does not count as number one. This is a foundation row. In the instructions it says to chain three and then turn. What I'm going to do for you today though I'm going to just stop and then when I progress up a new row I'm just going to get myself started. So I'm just gonna turn and then let's go to the instructions real quick and then we'll be right back to begin. 
So as we begin in the diagram we're now going to regress up to number one and we're gonna chain three to start. And then the first one here is a front post and I have an FP so I can see that here. And then the next one is a double crochet and then a front post again. And then a double crochet and then we're gonna do a cluster here. And then there will be 11 in a row for double crochet and then a cluster, double crochet, front post again double crochet front post again and then double crochet at the end. So once we get this established we're gonna just really kind of keep an eye on that because really once we understand where this cluster is the next ones are just one step in and then we just start eliminating stitches in the middle and start growing out the number of stitches that exist between the cluster and where the front posts are on this side. Let's begin round or row number one. So this is row number one. You'll come back to the spot if you're following the tutorial and you need it for the future. So the first one is gonna be a chain three. That counts as a double crochet. And now the next one here is gonna be a front post treble. So wrap the hook twice and then going into the side of the post and out to the other side. Okay, so in the side of the post and out the other. And then pull through and then pull through two, two all the way back up to the top. The next stitch is a double crochet. And then the next stitch after that is another front post treble. So just wrap the hook and come into the next one and go in there. And then the next one after that is a double crochet and then we're gonna begin the cluster work. So it's a front post cl uh, cluster all within the same one right here. So there's a total of three of them all together. So you're just gonna wrap the hook twice and going into the side and then you're just gonna insert in pull through and watch how we finish it. So we pull through two and two and hold it. And I need you to do that twice more. So wrap the hook again into the side, pull through, pull through two and two and hold it. So you don't finish it all the way and then wrap again and then in, pull through, pull through two and two and hold it. You should have a total of four loops on the hook and we will review this again throughout this tutorial today and then you're gonna pull through all four loops and then that's done. So the very next stitch, okay, so you'll see that this is covering in front of this stitch here. That's the post of what we're working on. So we immediately come to the next one and we're gonna double crochet into that one and 10 more. So there's gonna be a total of 11 double crochets in a row. So let's count that already as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, so there's gonna be eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And now we're gonna do that cluster all over again. So we're just gonna wrap twice and coming into the next post pull through, pull through two and two and hold and then wrap it again twice in the same one. So you do that total of three times again. Okay, and how many are loops are you looking for at the end? You're looking for four loops left on your hook and there is my four. So pull through all of them and now the next one, okay, so that post that you're around is this one right here. So you wanna ignore that one, go to the next one and double crochet and the next one after that is a front post treble. So wrap the hook twice coming into the next one. It's a front post treble. The next one is a double crochet. And then the next one is a front post treble. And then finally at the last turning chain go right into the chain itself not to a space and double crochet. So we've now just established the posts that are on each side and now we've established where the clusters are. So when we move up with the clusters we're gonna be moving one in from each of these and then it'll get more and more narrow as we work our way across. Let's move up now to row number two. So let's work our way to row number two. Let's turn our work and chain three to begin. So one, two, three. So now this is the back side. So this is the wrong side of the project. So we know that this one here and it will become more evident the more you grow it is the post work. So we wanna keep that post working on this side again. So we don't come into the front side this time. We just wrap the hook and use that and go into the back side. So the back post of that post and then just treble as normal. And that will keep the ridge going up on the same side. So the next one is a double crochet 
and then the next one is the back post treble. So there it is there. So wrapping the hook twice and going into the post and keeping that so it stays up on the other side. So we know that we have to double crochet in the next one and we can see that the cluster is in the next one but we don't wanna cluster into that same one. So we want to add another double crochet there just to shift ourselves over and now this one here is where we're gonna play. But because we're looking at the back side of the project we need to do the cluster on the, on the other side. So wrap the hook twice and coming into the back post and you are going to complete it as you normally would but on the back post. So wrapping twice and then going in. Let me try that again. It's a little awkward at first I would think and then I'm gonna get used to it just a matter of time. And then you make sure you don't finish it until you have a total of four loops on the hook. So pull through two and two and hold. Now you have your four so pull through all four and now that's done and you immediately jump to the next double crochet and this one here there's gonna be a total of nine double crochets in a row. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, this is seven, eight, and nine. Now here's the trick. The next one here is the last one before you hit this cluster and that's where we're going to put this cluster in. So wrapping twice going into the back post to start that and that's your new cluster and going in there. So do you really need to count going all the way across? Maybe if you wanna verify but I don't think you need to. If you, as long as you can physically see where you are then I think that you can get away with that and not have to excessively count making it a lot easier for you to be able to watch TV or be distracted. Once you have your four loops pull through all four and then go to your next one. Okay so this one here that post is where we just were playing. So we wanna go to the next one and double crochet until we see the front post um, sections that we had on the side. So we happen to know that there's two in a row anyway. But if you don't know that you just look for it. Okay so there is the front post there. So we wanna keep those as the front post so you have to access them from the back post. It's all about understanding if you're working on the right side or the wrong side when you're working with this. And once you understand that it's really quite simple. And then you double crochet in the final. So let's turn it around and look at our work. So we've now just completed row number two. So you can see that the clustering is starting now to start to edge in and it's really quite easy. So let's begin row number three. So just chain up three to begin and you can see your front posts are happening now. So you just make those as a front post treble. So keep them on this side. So I think that doing it from the front is a lot easier and probably quicker for you. And you just maintain that. Those lines go all the way up through the entire panel. So those will always be in the same position. Now what the trick is is that when you move on you'll see that there is the cluster here. So we just keep double crocheting until we get to the one after the cluster. But if you looked at the instructions it was said there would have been three in a row. So the next one here is the next one after the cluster and now because we're working on the right side, the good side, you wanna keep that cluster on the front side. So you access it from the front post. Okay and then that counts as that post that you're on. So you immediately jump to the next one and there should be technically seven stitches because I looked up at my sheet to see that but I'm not really gonna count it because I haven't started yet and I'm gonna look for when the next one pops up and then I'm gonna just double check myself. So I believe the next one is the next cluster. So let's count how many stitches I just did. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm right. So if you can just look for these uh, telltale signs of where you need to go I think you can avoid the excessive counting. So what I would like you to do is just um, finish this row. This is row number three 
and uh, just carry on and what I'm going to do then is that I'm going to review with you each the starting of each row and then I'm gonna physically do it so that I have it here but if you can see where these clusters are going that's pretty much the hardest part of this whole thing. And that's not saying much because it really isn't that hard once you once you got your pattern established. So let's uh, finish up now row number three together and we'll st kick you off in number four. Just quickly talk about it and then I'll do it and then we'll meet back once again. So that was row number three. Okay let's begin row number four, turn our work, chain up three and you're back on the wrong side again. So you just have to look for where these are. You can you can feel them actually with your fingers too. And so you're going to do your back post uh, trebles there to keep them on the other side. When you get to the cluster area, you're just gonna go to the one stitch after it. So here's the cluster. I'm gonna go to this stitch and here's the cluster. I'm gonna go to this stitch to apply it and there should be a total of five in a row on the inside. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you just keep double crocheting until you hit the post on the other side and this would be row number four. So please do that now and I'll see you at the end of row number four. So I finished up row number four and now I'm moving on to row number five. So we're starting up again just chain up three and look for your front post that you have and then look for the one after the original cluster here and so it'll be this one and then look for the one before this one right here leaving you three in the middle for double crochets and then the rest are double crochet until you get to these posts on the other side. So please complete row number five. I'm just completing row number five. You can see that it's gotten even closer and now we're gonna turn our work and again what we already know. So I see the clusters are right here, right in the middle. So the new clusters are gonna be with one after and the one after that leaving one in between that's uh, just a double crochet and then you're gonna do your the regular post that you normally have to keep that coming up on the back end here. Please do row number six now. So I'm just finishing up row number six. So we're gonna turn. So I have one more stitch that's left in the middle. So that'll be the very last um, cluster to go in here. So it'll be double crochets all the way to that point. There's only one cluster in this row and you can see everything's working out really quite beautifully here. So I'm gonna start off then row number um, seven as normal and then just one cluster right in the middle and then that's it and then it starts to then grow outward then as we go. So let's uh, begin row number seven. So row number seven is now complete. So we're gonna turn. So essentially now going to look for the center one which you can see it here on this side. Let's turn it around. So we have the, the we're looking at the wrong side right now. So the middle one now is the one that we want to put in a double crochet and now we're gonna look to the one on either side. So we're just gonna expand ourselves now going back out and you're just gonna maintain the edges. So let's begin row number eight and this is the same instruction as row number six. So essentially see where these two are? These two will appear again up here to be able to go outward. Let's begin row number eight. So finishing up row number eight. Let's turn our work and now you can see that it's starting to grow back out. So row number nine we're then going to continue. You really can see it now is that you're gonna start the one before to put the cluster and then the one after then to go outward. So let's begin row number nine. Okay row number nine is done. You can see it's further so coming back to the back side here. We look for the clusters and we're gonna go to the one after that. So this is row number ten. So let's just chain up three and begin again for row number 10. So I'm finishing up row number 10. So number 11 we're just gonna get even further out from the center and let's begin row number 11. So chain up three again and let's begin. So I'm finishing up row number 11 and now I'm gonna move to number 12. You should notice that there is three stitches left over before you hit this between the cluster and you're going to be thinking to yourself well this kind of doesn't make any sense and the reality is it will. So number 12 is the final of the repeat. So number 12 is not fully back to where it started down here. So this is row number one which we will complete um, after we get the repeat pattern of 12 done. So we're just going to then start number um, 12 here. You're gonna chain three and begin and I will explain more in just a moment. So I just finished up row number 12. So let's just uh, quickly zoom out here and let's review where we are. So we did repeat pattern now one through 12. Now when you go to start again 1 through 12 again the first one is gonna be furthest out like this. So it's actually gonna be the final um, stitch here. So you notice that there's two here. So when you go to crochet you'll be in this one here which gives you that one spacing that you need that you had 
down here. If the, hopefully that makes sense for you. So all you just need to do is just kind of fluff it up a little bit and you see the texture is really coming out nicely. So if you can identify the stitch work of going in and out, this panel is actually pretty easy to deal with. The other panels I think is even easier than this. Um, there's not a lot of thought to it and it's a repeat pattern of only four rows to go. So you wanna continue to repeat this over and over and over until you get to 54 inches and then you're gonna fasten off. The instructions say to omit the final chain three. The chain three is the final instruction of a row. It says to uh, chain three then turn. It's just telling you to ignore that and just finish it off without doing chain three at the end. So you're just gonna continue to repeat that until there's 54 inches and then that's good to go. So let's uh, begin to move on to the second panel that appears in this diagram or even in this pattern. <laughs> In panel number two we are going to do cabling work and it's consisting of rows number one, two, three, and four. Now rows number two and four they are the exact same thing that we're going to be doing and uh, we have to pay attention to what's on the front side and what's on the back. So the right side and the, and the wrong side when we're doing that. So really essentially number three is when it crisscrosses over to create the cabling work of the cables looking like they're weaving in and out of each other. So we're gonna get ourselves started. We're going to uh, chain ourselves a certain amount here. Um, I just have to refer to that but there's a total of 19 stitches across and uh, that's good to go. So there's actually a chaining of 21 to begin and then we're going to then continue along. So the foundation row doesn't count and row number one starts when we start doing the cabling. So using the same size crochet hook, a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook, um, you can use your Peyton's Decor but I'm using Karen One Pound for an example today. So what I want to do is that I want to chain a total of 21. So one, two, three, four, five, get your 21 done. Meet me back here in just a moment. Now that I have my 21 done, it's slightly smaller width wise than the other panel. So you'll notice that it will go pretty quick. So you're gonna go a four chain from the hook. So count it back. So one, two, three, go to the fourth, go to the back hump of the chain and just double crochet in that one. And then continue to in the back hump just double crochet all the way to the other side. You should be able to verify that there's 19 stitches all the way across. This is the foundation row so it doesn't, it's not counted as row number one and please do that all the way across for your starting. So once you come all the way back across, it says to turn, uh, chain three and then turn. For tutorial purposes, I always do it at the front end of a, of a road and I never do it at the back end. So I'll be doing that today. I wanna take you back to the diagram. I wanna show you what you're looking for and then you're going to continue then rows through one through four with me together. So as we begin the diagram, you're going to notice that two stitches on the outside are going to be just regular double crochets whether it's a turning chain or a double crochet going in. The next six in a row are your cabling and then three in the middle are just uh, double crochets that are stand alone and then you th the next six are your cabling and then you can see that this is working in aw uh, like in pairs. So you got two, six, three, six and two. So that's kind of what our goals are. So once we establish where our cables are in the next round, our row, what we can do is we can build from that and then it gets really quite easy to follow. Okay, so are you ready? You're gonna chain up three. It counts as a double crochet and you're gonna double crochet in the next one. Now the next six in a row, there'll still be a front post treble. So wrap the hook twice and then coming into the side of the post and out the other. And we want to make that a front post treble. So wrap the hook twice and keep doing that. So let's do six of those in a row. If this is your second um, uh, um, panel with us here on the camera, you already know how to do your trebles. So you just gotta do it. Okay, so we got, I'm looking for the number of six and that will get me started. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Now in the middle that separates the um, cabling is that the next three are just double crochets. So one, two and three and now the next six are trebles again. Front post trebles. So keep those on this side. So when we turn our work we're gonna be working with the wrong side next which we have to maintain these cabling on this side of the project. This is the right side of the project meaning it's the side that it's a good side. So if you're looking at the afghan that's lying on a bed this is the side that you're looking at. So you're doing six in a row. Let's count those up together. Should be six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I knew that because I could only see two left. And the very final two will be one double crochet. Make sure you go into a turning chain. Don't ever go into a gapping space because then it'll open it completely up. 
So that was row number one of four. So you can see it's kind of lifting off. Let's begin row number two. Turn the work and in row number two we're gonna ex match exactly what we see but instead of doing the front post troubles we're gonna do back post troubles to keep that work on the good side. So this is row number two. Chain up three to begin. That's your first double crochet. Double crochet in the next. So the next six in a row are each back post troubles. And this will keep that stitch work lifting off on the good side of the project. So let's do six in a row. So I wanna verify my counts. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the middle three will each be a double crochet. And now the next six, you can see that's kind of lifting off towards the back, will be a back post treble once again. So this is row number two of four and uh, it's really, really an easy pattern to be able to follow. A lot of people get intimidated with the cables but the reality is, is that they're really not hard if you, as long as you don't look at the whole project as a whole. You just look at it row by row and it will seem to make sense as you're crocheting it. I used to be really scared of them at one time. Okay. So there is my six in a row and I can tell because I got two stitches left and you're gonna double crochet in the final two. Make sure you go into the turning chain not to a gap space. And let's turn our work and you can start kind of see that the cables are kind of lifting up a bit. So let's begin row number three. So let's begin row number three. So what we are looking at is that I've already chained my three. Don't worry about my strands hanging off. I had to do an outtake on this one. So what I have here is that we have six in a row. We're gonna do a crisscross with those. Then the middle three, the middle one is going to be a bobble and then the next three are going to, our next six are gonna crisscross and then the final two. So let's, without further ado, let's begin. So I've already chained three, counts as my first double crochet and I'm gonna double crochet in the next one. So we're going to do a crisscross. So we have six in a row that you are standing off. We wanna go for the fourth one. So we're gonna wrap the hook and go from the front post and over. And we keep on doing that until we get three done in a row. You'll notice that they will lean over because that's what they're supposed to do. Now the other three that you skipped, we're gonna come back to the very first one of the grouping of those and we're gonna do those as a front post treble as well. And what this is doing is it's changing the order of these stitches so that they crisscross to get the cable look. Okay, so the six just got crisscrossed. Now we're gonna double crochet in the next one and then we're gonna do a bobble. I honestly think it's called a popcorn in today's ter terminology. It's an old pattern. So there's five double crochets in the next one. So let's just do that. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then just let it go. So now that you have your five, you go to the first one of the grouping of five, insert your hook in and pull that through and that'll make that pop out. And then you're going to double crochet in the next one. So those are your middle three that are done. So now the next th uh, six here, you're gonna crisscross them. So wrap the hook twice, go into the fourth one and just do what you already know. So once you get the first grouping of three in, come back and get the other three that you've skipped. So just starting at the furthest one away. So this is row number three. So the only difference um, really in row number three is the, the crisscrossing and the bobble right in the center. And then we'll begin the bobbles again next time we hit this particular number of, of rows. So this is the third row, one up. So once you have that one done, the final two is just a double crochet. Finally, row number four is the repeat pattern. So you're gonna turn your work 
and now it's just a really easy one. So you're just gonna chain up three to begin and it's a double crochet in the first one. So all of these ones that are crisscrossed are each a back post treble. So just starting in the very first one, if you have to manipulate it to get it, um, you'll notice that the cable work provides tension. That's intentional because that's what cable work does. And so you just work equally across getting them in the right sequence and they're already in the right sequence. You just gotta make sure you grab them by the right sequence and don't skip any. And so you get the first three that I've just grabbed and now these three are the next ones up. You may have to manipulate it with your fingers to pull it out if it's hiding. That's just normal for cabling. And then finally in the middle so there's technically only three stitches there so you wanna maintain the three stitches. So each one has a double crochet in it and then that brings it back to normal for the normal count and then the next three in a row are back post trebles. So all you just need to do is repeat rows number one through four until your work gets a total of 54 inches long and that's the same distance as the other panel that you're working on so that you can sew them together with the whip stitch uh, when you're ready for that particular process. It's easier to do afghans like this when they are in panels versus um, doing them as a complete set um, but of course if you can figure that out all the power to you. Okay, so the last two stitches are just one double crochet each and let's turn it and see what we've got ourselves into. So this is the finishing of row number four. So you can see that we have this now complete. So one, two, three, and four. So we go back and do number one. So it's a front post treble again on the six. And then we do number two which is a back post treble uh, on these six here. And then we do number three where we crisscross and we do a bobble right in the middle. And then we do number four then which was a back post uh, treble in order to get it and you will see that it will crisscross and when you look at the particular pattern that we have, which is off camera here if I pull it up, you can see that this kind of idea really works its way and does its magic all the way up within these uh, pillows and the afghan that you see and I think it's really quite awesome. So we're gonna move on to the border. It's really quite a simple border. Um, you can decide what works for you on uh, that particular process and if you wanna make up something even for yourself then you're okay to do that too. So eventually you're going to have your afghan completely assembled. All of the panels are together and now you're gonna go all the way around. So there's four rounds to do it. The first one here you want to go right into a corner over here and then just equally space. So on the ends like this you're just gonna go one into each one equally space all the way around and then when you come up around to the sides of the project you're just gonna equally space going into the chain work. Never go into like a gapping space cause that'll open it up. Always stay within the chain work and you're just going to single crochet. In the corners there will always be three single crochets in order to do that turn. Once you get that done you're gonna chain up three and the next one which is the middle there will be three double crochets applied into there and then you're gonna put uh, double crochet for the next two and then a bobble into the next. So what is a bobble? Let me look that up. So the bobbling is what we already know is that we're going to apply five double crochets into the same stitch, drop the loop, pick up the loop and then carry it uh, like pull it through and then the next five in a row are just double crochets and then a bobble. In the corners you will apply three double crochets and then you come back around and equally space these bobbles out between five after five double crochets. The next one is is that you're gonna chain up one and then one double crochet around each stitch all the way around. Don't worry about the corners and then the very final one is called the reverse single crochet so you're gonna chain up one and then come all the way back to the other uh, going back in the other direction going a reverse single crochet. It's also called a crab stitch and then that's it for your entire border. So without further ado I think that's it for today. Have a great day. We hope that you enjoy your afternoon.